And now to you, Percy. Um, Finance Trust Bank is known as the bank that puts women first. And it has a very unique uh, mission, one of its kind. It's probably one of those um, few mission statements that I've seen that mentions the word woman. If I can read that mission statement verbatim, um, to efficiently deliver innovative financial solutions to our customers and stakeholders, especially women. Now, uh, PASI as an institution, how do you live to that mission? Uh, thank you very much. I'll, I'll possibly ask uh, our legacy to play us a video, a short video that we have, uh, before I tell you what we do. So that video, coupled with the two stories I'm going to tell you, will tell you a lot about Finance Trust Bank in, in short. You see, one of the founding members told me a story on how Finance Trust Bank was conceived. She was a very well-to-do woman. She had actually been appointed uh, on one of the boards of the biggest financial institution then. And uh, in her first board meeting, she was asked to open up a bank account. So she went down to the banking hall to open up the account, and they asked her, please, can you share details of your husband? We want to be sure that he's OK with you opening a bank account. And uh, she thought, look, she was well-to-do lady. She has been appointed to the board, and she needed to seek consent from the husband to open a bank account. And, uh, of course, the rest is a story of her teaming together with other women and said this is impossible. If for us that are well-to-do can be asked to, open, to, to have reference to our husbands to open an account, what about the women in the villages? It is worse. So that's how the bank was conceived. So to Finance Trust Bank, the foundation of the bank is not just a strategy to tap into women. It's personal. We do it as part of the corporate DNA that uh, gave birth to this bank. Of course, we have a lot of women in the bank, but to some of us, you notice we are men, a couple of men here from Finance Trust Bank. We notice the task is so hard for women in respect to financial inclusion and economic and social empowerment. We could not entrust it to women alone, so that's why some of us are here. Then. The other story that I would like to tell you is about some of these workshops that you have seen us do for financial literacy. In one of them, uh, we, we, we have a session where we ask ladies, can you please share some of the things that a woman needs to do to get uh, empowered economically, uh, socially, uh, to enrich themselves. And specifically in one of the sessions in the East, a lady put up her hand and said, uh, the women in this place need to stop giving birth to so many children as a status symbol. And of course, everyone applauded her and laughed, and it was very interesting. Only for us to ask, and actually, women were saying, yes, in that particular part of the country, when a woman gets married, she needs to prove that she's a woman by giving birth to so many children, and... As one of the ladies said, when you're a mother and you give birth to children, the children then become your future. So if they are okay, yeah, you're okay. And uh, another lady 
was talking about things like she has a shop in town, in Mbale particularly, and when the whole family knew, her clansmen, that she had set up a shop, it became a coordination point. And for that matter, whoever was going through Mbale would stop there, get transport to the next destination. The, the reason I'm bringing these stories plus the video you have seen is that Finance Trust Bank was set out to deal with some of the things. The things that you have heard, some of them are social norms and beliefs that are in society, but somehow they influence the day-to-day -day decisions that people make on financial inclusion, on whether they should keep money in a bank. There are roles in a family as a mother or as a woman uh, and have making a choice to actually go and take a small loan uh, to improve her business. And if you're a financial institution, for us in Finance First Bank, we try to make sure such women, when they show up, they're given priority because they don't have so much time um, to, that like men. I'm a man and sometimes I have to leave home even without an agenda, but to a woman, leaving home must be purposeful and it better be short. So if we had, when we're dealing with women in the day-to-day -day circles and in the bank, we give them priority when they show up because we know they have a lot more responsibilities uh, in a home uh, than actually men. I remember during COVID, I phoned a colleague of mine and I told him, hey, where are you going? And he's a guy. He said, no, I'm just leaving home and taking a walk. I don't know where I'm actually going, but I can't stay home. I'm not used to that. But the women were possibly more comfortable doing that. So... As Finance Trust Bank, we're trying to tailor make our services to suit women. We're trying to create specific products that are more than just the traditional banking. When a woman gives birth in Finance Trust Bank, she's entitled to a certain package uh, to help her pay her hospital bills, for example. And that the women know. We, we, we're trying to fight the battle of uh, alternative channels. And we have our manager alternative channels here, uh, Mr. Sechito, right there. And our journey is to, to try and make sure the woman does not spend so much time away from her business and her family. Uh, and that helps us create an edge. Is this a war we have won? No. We haven't even gotten halfway. There's still a lot of work to do uh, in uh, helping our women and position ourselves into their minds. But we know that banking alone in respect to uh, keeping money for self-custody and a few loans here and there will not actually cut it for us. Uh, of course, staff engagement. We have uh, women uh, staff and men staff, and they all have to be in sync with, with knowing the purpose for which this bank was established to empower women economically. Then we also have a lot of stereotypes that we, we deal with on a day-to-day -day basis, uh, some of which are to do with women are so comfortable when it comes to, to the little they have. And so you see that there's a lot of stagnation. Some of the statistics that we will not show you is that, yes, we're having a lot of more women coming to the formal banking sector, but when you look at the, 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 the savings and the net savings and the actual credit they take out from banks, these are really small tickets that we, we want to improve. And, and yet we know all of us that access to credit is an enabler, and, but it's so more to the side of men than it is to women, especially in terms of the ticket. So a lot of things are being done in the bank, but through financial literacy, you can deal with the stereotypes. You can deal with the cultural limitations that are in there in product development, like access to collateral, form of security. Uh, we, we, we have platforms that allow women to access, and even men access loans on their mobile phone. I think we're the first bank that did this to allow women at least access up to a million shillings on a mobile phone. These things are part of the things we are doing and we keep innovating around the service for women. Thank you. Um, thank you very much.